Okay, I think we're live. We are live. Excellent. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're doing. Uh, hope you're all doing well. It's fantastic to. Uh, I'm finally live streaming on YouTube. I've, it's been so long. I tried doing it with the, um, you know, the old kind of like. What do you call it? With with YouTube, the YouTube app, and you can't do it. Like, oh, it's flipped my screen. I don't know why. I look like I'm having a stroke here. That's, um, right, that's awkward. Right, okay, I'm going to try and, I'm going to flip this around, hang on. Flip around. There we go, let's see how that looks on my screen. Um, I hope that should be okay, I hope it's not pressing too much with that. I'm going to flip around. Oh, okay, it's alright, it's okay. Right, sorry, I'm, I'm still testing stuff, I've not, oh no. That's not good at all. Right, I'm still testing stuff, as a lot of you may know, um, because I am pretty much... Um, okay, that's done nothing at all. I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> right, never mind. It's not going to happen. Right, time to talk about um, football. It's back. European football returns this week. I hope that... I could check the sound as well. The European football returns this week... And um, I can't wait. It's going to be brilliant. We've got Europa League, I think, starting Wednesday. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to uh, to uh, to watch that. It's going to be such a brilliant event. I, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, right, let's get this out on Discord. So I've been. Uh... I'm going to get South West TV Discord. Anyway, if anyone has got any questions about transfer stories and stuff, I'll get to them and I'll have a look through them because I'd be very interested to, you know, hear what what stories you guys have got for, you know, um, yeah. I'm gonna, I've put free pings in the Discord. I feel so bad for putting free pings in the Discord. I really hate doing it. Um, oh, okay. I hope that's not showing my screen because it's my phone screen. Anyway. Um, let's get started. I know it's taken two and a half minutes to get in. Um, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, um, let's have a look and talk about... Right, so we've got a few of the stories this morning. Jaden Sancho, another big guy who's coming in from... who's been linked heavily with United uh, over the past couple of days. Uh, past, not days, months. We've been here for you know ages with this Jaden Sancho saga. I think uh, with Sancho, we have to take everything with a pinch of salt. Because there's everyone... We have a big transfer story. This is the biggest transfer story of the summer. And no one's going to... you know, Nobody's going to top Sancho over between now and October when the transfer window ends. What's going to happen is, over the next kind of um, few weeks maybe, we're just going to see people um, bringing out lots of stories about Sancho, trying to get clicks, get views, and get all these sorts of things. Um... The best people, and we're only going to quote on Westy TV, the um, a few journal two journalists who are Christian Falk, who are from Build, who's from Build, and Fabrizio Romano from Sky. Now they're both probably the best people for the job in in Europe. I'm not. There's no other people who I'd recommend apart from them. Um, if you're looking at Manchester Evening News for people for transfer stories, they're not probably the best. Even though they're maybe close to the club, they're not. They're not always going to be correct, and that's that's what we're all going to take. It's very difficult to get the right get the right transfer story. Sorry. Right. Let's have a look and see what we've all got for everyone. If you have any questions, of course, in the live comments, feel free. Just hit, the, give me a question, and uh, we'll get on to it straight away. Um, anyway, transfers, rumours. We've got from the BBC today. We've just basically compiled everything into a little gossip column. Um, so FA Cup winners Arsenal, congratulations Arsenal of course, they've won the uh, FA Cup in England, they're in the Europa League next season, they've knocked Tottenham down to the second qualifying round, which will be a lot of fun for Tottenham I think, um, hopefully you know they all enjoy it, but anyway, they're targeting a severe centre-back called Diego Carlos, I've never heard of him, I'm, I'm sorry I've never heard of Diego Carlos in my life, but um, Arteta is planning a summer overall and I think it's one of those things that I think Arteta really needs to do for Arsenal, and I think he will get them back into the top six next season. They have been very unfortunate, I think, Arsenal this season. They've had, um, you know, they changed their Unai Emery in before December, and it was kind of like 
Yeah, well, we, we can do it, but you know they've got they've got a lot to do. I think you know Arsenal are a good they're a good team. They've got the money, but their owners are just a bit. Their owners aren't the greatest, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, also Arsenal has also called Barcelona and Croatia midfielder Ivan Rakitic um, to discuss a potential move to North London. Now that is uh, from Ellis uh, Le. Le, uh, I need to learn the French for France. Uh, Le Disport in French. So that's in French. I wouldn't be surprised actually. Rakitic has been actually linked with Arsenal for a long, long time. It's not. It's kind of like his Premier League move away from Barcelona. That's kind of been. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that move went through. Rakitic hasn't hasn't really had the um, had a good season, I think, at Barcelona. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, now this one, this next one from the BBC is absolute rubbish. I've never seen more rubbish in my life. If you see anything in your life from the sun, never ever click on it. I'm not even joking. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. Manchester United are considering a move for Leicester City and Denmark goalkeeper Kasper Schmeichel. Now because he's got Schmeichel in his name, it means anyone's got a link to United. And that's just anything else because of Peter Schmeichel back in 1999. That's all they're going to do um, so I've got no kind of you know interest in that story it's a bit pointless in my opinion um, uh, Liverpool have moved ahead in the Paris PSG in the race for Bayern Munich's Thiago Alcantara yep I think Alcantara there's been a lot of rumours in the last couple of days suggesting that Alcantara is going to move and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case 29 million I think was the reported fee and I think um, Liverpool will definitely pounce on that. There's no no doubt about it that they'll um, they'll look into that deal and have a go. But of course, he is very injury prone, and that's something we've got to watch very carefully with that. We check how the Discord one's going. Um, oh, okay. I think they're, they're currently doing the. Try and get FPC on it. Um, yeah, if you're watching, by the way, say give us a hello, give us a little wave. I'd love to, you know, have a chat with you and see about talk about football and stuff. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur. So, a bit of Tottenham news for you all. Uh, Everton to sign Lil. Uh, they're competing with Everton to sign a right back called Zeki Selic. Now, uh, Lil have had a, they've had an okay season. I don't think. I think there's teams when they qualify for Europe, and a lot of teams, the smaller teams that. Um, across Europe, you get these teams such as like Lille, and um, I'll throw a few in there. Um, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of more. And there was a few examples of this. Marseille, oh no, Montpellier back in 2013, and uh, Malaga. They'll have a brilliant season in the Champions League, but the domestic form is going to be crap. And um, I think Lille, they, they've not had a good. I was going to say with Lille, Liga. Because they got cancelled, didn't they? So I've got a very itchy nose. Right, Liga, um, Liga on table. Let's have a look. Let's see what we had. Um, okay, well, the Google's going to bring up straight away. Right, uh, Liga 2020. Why? They, I don't know why Wikipedia they advertise the the 2021, the 2020-2021 season, and it's kind of like. What's the point? Right, let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, sorry, I've really got a really, really itchy nose. I'm <laughs> going to die out of here. Okay, Lil qualified for the Europa League group stage along with Nice. Now, Lil, I think, you know, it's surprising. Spurs and Spurs are going to be, should it be a step down for, for Zeki Selig? I wouldn't be, and for Everton as well. Everton didn't qualify. It's like, you know, what's the point of moving? To them, I mean, you're not. It's not the greatest of it. I know you're playing in England, one of the best leagues in the world. But if you've got Europa League football guaranteed, and Spurs are now not look, not got Europa League football confirmed in the group stage yet, but it just doesn't make much sense to me. And Spurs considering selling Ivory Coast right back Serge Aurier, who's four years older. I mean, Aurier's been fine. I don't get that. Um, for, for Spurs, I, I, he's a good player. I rate him very much. 
Um, yeah, I don't get that either. Arsenal, Gabon striker, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Another big story that came out of the FA Cup final win. Um, so, Aubameyang is... He's apparently going to sign a 250k contract uh, for three years. That's a big that's a big contract for Arsenal. I think it's part of Arteta's rebuilding project. Because Man United, they, they're currently... I've got really young. I've got a good issue. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fucking that. Right. Um... Arteta's kind of doing a job like like um, like Ole's doing right now, and um, right, Arteta's doing a big job with um, with Arsenal, and I think he's ma- picking up um, he's pick- he's picking up the pieces from Emery's reign, and I think understandably so. I I completely understand it. Ole is doing the same with Mourinho and Van Gaal and and noise and all these people are coming who've preceded him. Um, oh jeez, I'm gonna have to fucking take a hate of a tablet or some shit. Right. Um, <laughs> this is not what you want to happen on your first live stream back to YouTube. Um, but yes, let's um, let's move on from Aubameyang. I think he'll be a, he'll he'll be a sign that deal. I think Arteta won't. Arteta, he's not gonna leave Arsenal. Surely not. Um, This is a hit YouTube. Before we start, this is an allergy tablet. It's not cocaine. Um, right, Wilfred Zaha. That's a big. That's a name I've not heard for a while. Hey, it's Achi. How you doing, buddy? Welcome. Welcome to uh, to the European uh, Monday Football Show. Really, really good to see you. I mean, if you have any questions about uh, anything European football wise, well, and transfers and stuff, we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, well, give me, give me, send me a question in the live comments. I'd really love to, you know, hear, hear your opinions on stuff. And you know, that's one of the big things. But welcome, out Atachi. Hope you, hope you're doing well, buddy. And uh, yeah, it's good to be, uh, it's good to be here. Anyway, then, let's talk about Zaha. So he's apparently a target for Arsenal. Aston Villa going for Rigi, which is very interesting. Uh, Man United looking at a little centre back called Gabriel Magalhares. 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 I, I don't know these days. It's all these names are brilliant, but they're um, really hard to pronounce. It's like commentating uh, FBC all over again. Anyway, um, Brazilian defender 22. He's got potential. Definitely is a centre back. He can go a long way. The centre backs tend to retire longer into their careers, and that's kind of interesting to um, to. You know, think about strikers where are easy centre backs not so much. Van Dyke's probably got another six years in him, and I can't wait to see Van Dyke continue his career. But I think he will at Liverpool. Anyway, if you're wondering why I'm scratching my eyes, I've got hay fever. I probably think I have got hay fever badly. Uh, opinions on try on Chelsea trying to buy every single player with two legs in Europe right now. To be honest, though, Chelsea have actually got a really, really good. Um, transfer kind of like set up they've had for years they've had um, well they had a transfer ban because of the whole I think it was a oh, I can't remember what the transfer ban was for uh, Chelsea transfer ban I can't remember who did it but Chelsea I think they were right to buy Werner and Ziyech yes it may yes it may deplete their um, their attacking you know abilities and their attacking um, opportunities for like, people like Abraham Cal- Callum hudson Adoy and uh and uh, yeah, for Abraham Callum Hazard Adoy, and I'm trying to think of the other guy. I should probably know this better. Um, never mind. We'll just we'll, yeah, but Hazard and Adoy, and I think um, so they were breached. So Chelsea were actually breached for Bertrand Traore. So that's interesting. Um, 150 rule breaches. Chelsea though have done a, have a nuts transfer strategy. Unbelievable! I've never seen anything. Um, you know, I, I really have respect for Chelsea at the minute with their transfer stuff. They've made more sign. Chelsea have directly proved that you can sign players outside of a uh, outside of a transfer window. That's one of the good things. Also, would you abandon Kepa and splash like a hundred million on Black or just stick it out and spend elsewhere? That's a big thing that's been in the news as well. I don't think Chelsea are going to end up going for Oblak because they know that. 
Atletico, there was an interesting thing about Atletico the other day, and they said that um, now that Chelsea have spent on Werner and Ziyech, and they're apparently going for Havertz as well, it's nuts. Um, but Havertz, Havertz will probably end up going to Chelsea, I can see that definitely happening. But Kepa, I think, is going to leave, and they're going to have Caballero as a backup for next season. And then 100 million on our black is not going to happen if Havertz goes through. So I think they may end up replacing Kepa with either Nick Pope. I think Nick Pope from Burnley was one of the names that was mentioned. But um, yeah, I think I don't think our black is going to go to go to uh, go to Chelsea. I think he'll stay at Atletico this summer. Um, I can definitely see Old Black going to the Premier League in the future, but I don't see him coming um, this summer. I don't think he's going to move. I think Atletico. I mean, how did Atletico do? I can't remember. Um, let's have a look. La Liga. And they would definitely. It might have been my FM save that I'm thinking of, but um, <laughs> it might have been my FM save that I'm thinking of where they where he got where they did terribly. Um, uh, let's have a look and see, shall we? I'm trying to find it. 1920, there we go. Okay, uh, so Atletico Madrid, they did qualify for the Champions League, they were finished third this season. Really good for. Um, oh, just in Granada, they qualified. Oh, well done, Granada, that's brilliant. <laughs> Villarreal in the Europa League and Real Sociedad. They've actually done quite well, Sociedad. They didn't Moyes destroy them after he left United. Espanyol went down. They're in the Europa League. I thought they were in the Europa League. That's insane. I didn't think they'd have that. That's... When were they in the... That's crazy. I don't... <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um, right, anyway, back to transfers. I'm I'm getting distracted now. Right. Uh, Man United uh, Executive Vice Chairman Ed Woodward has held... Yeah, we've done that one. Uh, United are hoping to use Chris Smalling as a swap deal for Inter Milan's... Um, no, that's not going to happen. Milan Skriniar. I don't... Skriniar, I think he's not going to go... Skriniar is another name that I think would leave this summer, but I don't think it will be to England. I think it will be to either Spain or Italy. Uh, not to Italy. Um, Spain or Germany or France. I don't think he'll um, come to England. I'd be very surprised if he did actually this summer, because Skriniar is actually a very highly rated centre-back for Inter Milan. He's only rose to kind of his... Um, he's only really rose to his kind of level over the past couple of years and I think he'll maybe next summer when the market's a bit a bit easier to do deals with because uh, currently coronavirus is just absolutely decimated the transfer market um, but anyway uh, Smalling said to Old Trafford yep he's going to I think Smalling is going to return to Old Trafford after a spell at Roma it's not likely that I um, oh poor connection there nothing happened nothing happened it's fine we're all okay Right, um, as well, we've, uh, yeah, Smalling back to Ro back to Man United, I think, um, he had a brilliant spell at Roma, I think he's going to do some good things for Ole, if next season, um, adding to depth at centre-back, I think is going to be important. Um, Italian giants, AC Milan, Napoli and talks with uh, Norwich City defender Ben Godfrey, that's an interesting move, I think, for people, um, the Canaries being relegated from the Premier League, I I was sad, I felt kind of sad for Norwich. They had a they had a brilliant start and then it all just bottled into a big kind of ball and it didn't really work out for them. Um, but Godfrey definitely AC Milan and Napoli. Milan have got these. Nap Napoli are building. AC Milan definitely building around kind of Ibrahimovic at the minute. I think he's going to stay next season. So um, yeah, I don't see. Um, I don't see why not. You know, they've, it's going to be interesting. Ben Godfrey, I think, is definitely going to Europe this summer. Um, right, let's have a look. Uh, big talk 
in the on the BBC this morning about Liverpool. Um, now, oh yeah, Lovren. I forgot Lovren left. Apparently, um, Matip. Apparently, the rumours apparently of him going to PSG for a very very big fee. Apparently, eighty million. Um, I think Matip could take that move. It's very very plausible for Matip. Um, for sure, everyone's left FBC because everyone. I think it's gone down. Okay. I'll just put my stream in for now. That'll work. That 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 will keep him busy for a bit. Um, okay. Um, Adrian left on a free transfer. It's a bit sad. I mean. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting for Liverpool. They're not going to have... Uh... Oh, big news. Fabrizio just tweeted last five minutes. Right, we've got a tr thing from Fabrizio Romano this morning. Willian has refused another bid from Chelsea to extend his contract until 2022. Still no agreement. Arsenal are now in talks with his representatives to sign him as a free agent. No bids from Barcelona at the moment. So, um, that's very big news um, for Chelsea. I don't think they. I think ZX going to fill that position now for for Willian for Willian's kind of void. But that's very big news for um, for Chelsea if they're not going to have uh, they're not going to have them next season. I mean, I'm surprised they were going to. What do you want? Not three years something um, ridiculous. Clive Chelsea, why did he draw the time leg? Oh. That's surprising. He's apparently going to become Rangers' his new commentator. Rangers? Like, that's a big step down, especially from like... Uh, from like... Oh, what do you call it? I can't remember what you, how, how you'd call it, really. Um... I mentioned good more on Fabrizio, see what he's tweeting in the past couple of hours. Um, yeah, Milan, Mil I'm a bit on Sergio Rio from, Sergio Rio from earlier. Uh, Milan are starting talks with him. I think it'll be um, interesting. Milan are going to definitely probably be a good force next season. Are they back in the Champions League? Uh, Syria. Because they had. Uh, Let's see what we've got here for AC Milan. Milan at six, which I think gives them Europa League football. If I'm Napoli, miss out on Europa League. That's big. And uh, yeah, Lazio back in the Champions League. I there's a lot of teams next season. I think in the Champions League that are going to be very interesting. Um, Marseille, one of them, I'd like to play. Um, one of the teams I'd actually like to play next season is Marseille, and I think people, um, yeah, I think people need to, you know, think about it a bit. And uh, I think there's another team I was very interested in. Ajax were one of them, I think. Okay, I'm gonna have a get some. Uh, oh, we got some more news on Sancho. Ideally, Borussia Dortmund want an initial 90 million for Sancho to fund a replacement. In idea, ideally, that ninety million for Sancho to fund a replacement—it's not the you're gonna you're gonna have to spend a long time scouting a target for, that's worth ninety million. We've been on Sancho for about a year nearly now. It's not like um, it's not like we've been here before. I mean, unlike the spend that that amount on you signing has softening the start of the initial fee. There was talk as well. There was something like uh, seventy million up front. Then a thirty million bid, thirty million for next year to be paid in. And then a twenty million the other day. It's like paying off kind of like an old car or something, or a new car. You just pay it in instalments in a way. Um, oh yeah, Neymar joined Paris for the record fee, two hundred and twenty million, something like that. Oh, Sanchez has agreed to spread his huge salary of a three-year contract with Inter Milan until June twenty twenty-three. So I think Sanchez will go to Milan on Wednesday. Um, we'll we'll have a look if we get if I get a chance on Friday I'll do another live and we'll um, and we'll discuss this further. But I think um, 
I think this is going to be uh, quite interesting, I think. Uh, people will probably like it, hopefully. Anyhow, let's have a look at... Uh, thank you, I've just had 56 subs. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it's very nice of you to... Uh, to... Uh, come out and uh, like the video and make sure as well leave a like in the, in the comment below if you have any comments about stuff we want to cover next week um, because of course European football is going to be for the next I think it's the I think we go until I can't remember the calendar I'm, <laughs> I can't remember what's um, UEFA let's go to UEFA and see what we can uh, suss out for what we've got this week um so this week's uh, fixtures for the Champions League and Europa League. Uh, I'm going to just talk to you about that. Right, Champions League. We've got... Um, okay. Tuesday, 10th of March. Okay, on Friday this week, you have got, for you all, uh, Juventus Leon 1-0 for Leon. currently the first leg. I said Leon may go through in this one. Uh, that will be in Chirin. Uh, Manchester, Manchester City take on Real Madrid. They're currently leading the tie 2-1. Uh, can Pep take his team into the quarter-finals? Then Saturday, it's a big, two big games, especially one for Chelsea. 3-0 for Bayern Munich, currently leading that leg, uh, leading off the first leg in uh, Stamford Bridge. The Camp now uh, hosts Barcelona and Napoli, between, uh, which is 1-1. And uh, right, we're going to get the quarterfinal and semi final draws. Um, right, I'm going to have a look at the 2019 20 Champions League. Okay. I'll bring up all the fixtures and uh, stuff, don't worry. Okay, so. Um, then the. On the Wednesday, that the next week after that, you've got Atalanta versus Paris Saint-Germain on the 12th of August. Then RB Leipzig versus Atletico Madrid on the 13th of August. Um, that's my results day. Pray for me. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put the live stream again. I'm going to put it in this channel. Put it in this channel. See, see we can get some uh, people in and uh, you know talking with us, and that's uh, that's really important. Hope you all. If you have any, if anyone's got any questions, of course, about the Champions League and stuff going on this week, I'd really, really love to have a conversation with you and stuff uh, about that. Uh, but anyway, Real Madrid or Manchester City will play. Um, uh, they'll like. I think they'll play. I can't remember how it all, it's all going to work. Um, let's have a look and see what we can do with that. Sorry, I've got still got a really itchy nose. That hay fever tablet has done nothing, nothing at all. Um, right, uh, let's have a look. 2019. You're for Champions League, that's the one we want. Right, open that up and look for look. Europa League is one in a minute. Um, Sorry, I just need to get up the fixtures for you guys because I know you're all uh, you're all in interested. Okay, so uh, the winner of R sixteen eight, so that will be on the. So sorry, I'll go back a bit. We'll go back to the start of the quarterfinals again. So the winner of Man City and Real Madrid versus the winner of Leon and Juventus, that will be on the fifteenth of August for you guys. RB Leipzig. 13th of August, that Atletico game, will and they'll play on the 13th. Winners of Napoli-Barcelona play, or winners of Chelsea-Bayern-Munich, and that will be on the 14th of August. Atalanta versus PSG, that's the first quarter final on the 12th of August, and that will be... Um, they'll, they'll, I'll go through. Anyway... Winners of quarter-final 1 on the 19th of August versus the winners of quarter-final 3... That will be on the 19th of August, so that will be some nuts game. I, can't, I'm not, I can't remember, I'll let you guys work it out when you get there. Um, then the winners 
of QF2, so that'll be RB Leipzig will play Atletico Madrid will play Atlanta, Atalanta versus PSG. It's all worked out kind of rather well for um It's all kind of worked out rather well, I think, for the Champions League. Let's have a look at the Europa League, because I know the Europa League is also going to be quite interesting for some uh, Man United fans. Um, not me particularly. Um, I'm joking. I, I can't wait for it to be back. Um, but anyway, they're going to be playing M. Cologne, Duisburg, Dusseldorf and Gelsenkirchen, which I think will be a lot of fun. I hope, uh, I do hope that... Uh... Okay, let's go down to the knockout stage. Here we go. Right. Let me have a look here. Right, so we've got this week we have um, Inter Milan. That's the first game, so that'll be on Wednesday versus Getafe. That's going to be definitely watch Inter Milan versus Getafe because they're two of the, probably the best teams in the competition at the minute. Uh, Getafe, of course, beat Ajax. Um, the, you know, if you're meeting Champions League semi finalists, I definitely, the last season's Champions League semi finalists, you're definitely a dangerous team. And I think Inter Milan are going to be. Um, they're going to be one of these teams who I think are going to, you know, really, really um, dominate the competition. But hopefully, um, it should all be okay. Then Sevilla Roma that's going to be on the Thursday, and um, then that will be on the Thursday. And then, of course, as well, you've got a few more games um, coming as well. On the fifth of August, you've got Istanbul Başakşehir versus Copenhagen. Then you've got um, VFL Wolfsburg versus Shakhtar Donetsk, Lask versus Manchester United on the that, and that's all on the fifth with Inter Milan and Tafe. Um, then on Thursday you're going to have Olympiakos versus Wolves, Rangers versus Bayer Leverkusen, Sevilla Roma and Eintracht Frankfurt versus Basel. That's going to happen then. Then quarterfinals um, you're going to have, I think. So, the 11th of August ties, you're going to have 16-4. That will be either Wolfsburg or Shakhtar Donetsk against Eintracht Frankfurt versus Basel. Then, round of 16-8 for Man last Manchester United on the 10th. Oh, no, 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 I've skipped ahead a bit. Um, so, winners are 16-2 versus R16-6. That will be Olympiacos versus Wolves or uh, Sevilla Roma. Winners of, uh, then we'll go to the 10th of August, this is the 10th, this is the Monday, I think, next week. Yep, Monday next week, you'll have Manchester United or Lask, probably Manchester United after the first leg win. And then um, they'll be playing either Istanbul, Besiktas or Kap Copenhagen. And then, sorry, I'm losing my voice a bit. Um... Inter Milan versus Getafe or Rangers by Leverkusen on the 10th of August. So I think that'd be, that'd be a good time thing for Rangers. I think um, I, I, I'm looking forward to some of these Europa ties. Just because it's not the Champions League doesn't mean that um, you know some of these ties aren't going to be really good. I mean, I think that'd be brilliant. Then you win as a QF4, so that'll be... Um, I, I, there's so many teams I can't really tell I just can't really tell how that is going to be um, yeah so quarter to final 16th and 17th of August and then the final on the 21st I'm looking forward to a lot of these I think uh, people I think it's going to be a lot of fun I can't wait to you know to uh, see what's going to happen here okay um I think as well, Diego Jota and Bruno Fernandes, Alfredo Morelos, uh, Dacia Camanda, Camada, Andras Spora, uh, Edin Vizca are all on six goals. Um, a bit of fun, I think, this this uh, this uh, Europa League. But hopefully, um, hopefully it's all a lot of fun. I hope uh, people, you know, keep enjoying, keep. Um, you know, liking and subscribing. 
Um, right, a bit of news as well. Um, I'm going to just do a bit of uh, a bit of a thing for you guys as well. Um, just a bit of a quick mention. Uh, yes, I know my content has been down for a couple of days. I've not really kind of uh, posted very much. We're going to have an FTS episode uh, tomorrow, and um, there should be a few other videos as well. But if you make sure as well, you keep contacting me on Twitter and on uh, on Instagram, and we'll have a and I'll be retreating a few stories over the next couple of days. But um, I hope you will, uh, you know, really, really do enjoy um, the next couple of you know weeks of football. Um, hopefully, um, yeah, I, I hope everyone really enjoys it. We're back next Monday, I think, so that'll be the tenth. Um, before the Man United uh, Istanbul Besiktas game, I believe. So um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just so good thinking about European football to be back in uh, just a couple of days, and uh, you know I'm looking forward to it so so much. So um, thank you all very much for watching today's episode of the Monday Football Show. If you have any questions, leave them in the live comments below, and uh, we'll look at them. Uh, and I'll take a look at them on uh, and I'll try and get them answered but if you have any questions of course at me on Twitter at Westy TV YouTube I think that's my at and you can also DM me on, DM me on Instagram and at Westy TV and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get to all of your questions if you have any of them in the comments as well um, yeah I'm glad this all worked first time with Streamlabs um, if you want to see more videos of me doing live streams and stuff i'd love to do it but um but yeah thank you all very very much for watching um enjoy your afternoons on a monday and uh yeah, make sure you know stay safe and all these sorts of things wear a mask and stuff out in public um yeah thank you everyone i'm sorry my nose is I'm sorry my nose is dead but um yeah thank you all for watching See you next time, and uh, have a good evening, everyone. Yep, I do want to end.